the military is developing a weaponized starship, as seen in today's episode. In the meantime, Relativity Space fires up their new 3D printed rocket engine and builds a second launch tower for Starbase. This is Cosmic Era. The story to follow in 2023 has been the SpaceX Starship. While spaceflight enthusiasts such as ourselves have undoubtedly been enthralled with the sight of this enormous rocket, there is another faction that has been observing the Starship with considerable curiosity. The American Armed Forces. These guys don't seem interested in space travel, spreading consciousness, or any of the other Elon Musk space messiah nonsense, at least not that I can tell. They spot a massive war machine propelled by rockets. It is known that the Air Force desires a customized version of the Starship. In fact, they have been announcing that goal for years. Furthermore, news reports state that the Air Force is extremely pleased with the advancements made at Starbase this year. The Air Force Research Laboratory gave SpaceX a 102 million contract back in January 2022 to demonstrate suborbital cargo transportation using their Starship vehicle, which is still under development. Around 2020, concept drawings of this military Starship began to surface. The concept is that launching spacecraft and landing on different continents is a faster means of delivering supplies for both military operations and humanitarian relief missions, which the US military frequently conducts. Suborbital jumps have been investigated as a potential substitute for rocket launches because planes are slower and produce more pollution than rocket launches. Still, it hasn't been simple. Apart from the standard testing setbacks, such as the explosion on April 20th that ended the first Starship test flight, there is simply a ton of data that needs to be verified before a plan such as this can be implemented. Gear could be transported from Florida to Japan in about an hour with a suborbital flight, but first the Starship needs to make it through the flight and land safely in potentially hazardous environments. Most importantly, though, the cargo needs to make it through the vacuum of space. It turns out that a great deal of stuff needs surrounding pressure to stay together. Plumbing, electronics, and pretty much anything that can't withstand the abrupt loss of external forces are usually damaged by depressurization. Since depressurizing the entire Dragon capsule is necessary for the Polaris Dawn missions to enable astronauts to conduct spacewalks, SpaceX is likely conducting a lot of this kind of testing at the moment. The Gemini missions that achieved a similar feat required NASA to plan similarly, and the flight equipment and onboard terminals had to be constructed to withstand vacuum. The turbulence that occurs during launch and re-entry is another factor. The kind of forces you have to be trained to withstand. Although military hardware is durable, there will be some considerations for the rough ride if you intend to fly electronics, water, and rations. Additionally, the Air Force is reportedly considering a few test ideas, one of which involves simply launching a Humvee into space. But they need to see what SpaceX can do before moving forward with this program. The chief scientist at the Air Force Research Laboratory outlined the plans for the rocket cargo program for the next two years in an interview with Defense News on November 1. The big test will come in 2024, first and foremost. The Air Force intends to do nothing more than observe as SpaceX conducts as many test flights as possible because they need flight data to decide which rocket to choose for their cargo program. According to Spaniard, the Air Force will decide on Starship by the end of 2024, and if they decide to move forward, physical testing can start. He continued by saying that, although 2026 is the more likely target, the program hopes to have a demonstration flight by 2025 at the latest. If this goes well, the Air Force will receive a suborbital cargo version that allows for the rapid redeployment of equipment, supplies, and vehicles from and to orbit, anywhere in the world. It really is the sky is the limit. Though the holidays are quickly approaching, the building crews at Starbase Boca Chica, Texas, are working diligently to prepare the site for the upcoming Starship launch. 
However, it's not their only activity. Workers were observed starting intensive work on suborbital Pad A in the gateway to Mars area on December 12th, rather than on the orbital launch mount or the tank farm as for that location. For the next few hours, cranes, heavy equipment, and hand tools were utilized by the construction crews to dismantle the suborbital test stand completely. Pad A was last used in February for a cryoproofing test for Ship 26, and I guess we now know why. This pad is one of two structures that SpaceX has used for static fire, spin prime, and cryoproofing tests in the past. We can think of a few reasons why SpaceX would want to move pad air out of that spot, and it's most definitely not because they are slowing down. The main launch pad and tower are undergoing repairs at a rapid pace because the second Starship test flight last month caused very little damage. For example, the quick disconnects were fixed concurrently with the demolition of Pad A. However, it's evident that the area surrounding the former test stand is being prepared for something bigger. One obvious sign of things to come is the gleaming new entrance and signage for the gateway to Mars, but there's also a hint that has been subtly revealed to us from over on the Space Coast. At NASA's Kennedy Space Center, SpaceX maintains a sizable workspace at Pad 39A. This is the location where the company has been building Starship's main launch facility, which will eventually include a production and maintenance facility nearby. However, at the end of last week, NASA spaceflight camera crews captured footage of a massive fuel tank and an even larger launch tower section being loaded onto a barge, which we assume is headed towards Texas. To build a second tower at Starbase, SpaceX appears to be cannibalizing tower components from their ongoing construction project in Florida. Although the company hasn't confirmed anything yet, it makes a lot of sense. First off, testing needs to pick up speed at Boca Chica before the company even gets to launch from Florida, so a second tower doesn't make much sense there. Florida already has a tower that is almost finished, and while that site will eventually need a second tower. Another solid reason to believe that this tower section is going to Texas is the requirement for a faster testing pace. As we've discussed previously, SpaceX has a very strict testing schedule for this coming year, and they simply cannot finish all of the test flights they require with just one tower in operation. Now, the location of this second tower will become clear when suborbital pad A is demolished. Although it would normally be unwise to place two launch apparatus so close to one another, the new deluge system proved to be capable of withstanding the forces released by Starship's extremely heavy booster during the most recent test flight. However, Pad A's demolition is not the sole example of that. At an exclusive event held in Brownsville, Texas on December 12, Starbase General Manager Kathy Luter announced that the company would be moving all engine testing to the Massey site, which is located near Starbase proper. Currently, Massey's has been utilized for cryoproofing and tank pressurization tests, but Luter's remarks seem to suggest that Starbase's remaining suborbital launch pad will eventually be relocated to the secondary location making even more room possible for an additional tower. Based on all of this, it is likely that Starbase will build a new tower within the next few months. To do that, however, SpaceX will need to slightly increase the size of their orbital launch pad in order to free up additional space for the new tower from the public roads. That will require a significant amount of work, including the installation of a second tank farm a water storage facility, and an OLM with its own deluge system, as well as the drilling of new piles into the soft Boca Chica coastline to provide support. By no means will this be a simple task. This presents a good opportunity for the company to build a more reliable fuel and water storage system that could feed both towers, but it is unlikely to happen unless they have a significant shutdown window for some other reason. In any case, it appears that SpaceX has their work cut out for them. However, 
the construction of a second tower raises the possibility of a double launch event or even the first attempt to intercept a returning booster. Redundancy, or having two towers, allows SpaceX to conduct some of the more dangerous tests. On March 22, 2023, Relativity launched the Terran 1, their first rocket, sending them hurtling into space race history. This was the first time a vehicle built using additive manufacturing had ever taken to the skies. And although it reached space, the Terran 1 was unable to reach orbit and its second stage failed to ignite. After that, Relativity took a drastic turn. They made the decision to shelve the Terran 1 in favor of the Terran R, the heavy lift rocket concept. This is where the new engine they have works. Even though it's not as large as Starship, the Terran R is still an enormous rocket standing 270 feet tall. Its engines, 13 of which will power the rocket's first stage, are almost entirely 3D printed, just like its predecessor, the Terran R. Terran 1 was launched by Eon 1 engines, each of which produced roughly 23,000 pounds of force. With a force of 258,000 pounds, the Eon R that fired last Thursday produces more than 10 times that amount. That is roughly equivalent to half of a Raptor 2 engine produced by SpaceX. The truly amazing thing about this test is that it probably wouldn't have been feasible so quickly if Relativity hadn't taken the chance to abandon Terran 1. But it was unquestionably the right decision. Not even a year after their previous tests, Relativity has made this significant technological leap by devoting all of their resources to the Terran R program in lieu of working on the Terran 1 program. Even without taking into account the new 3D printing technology they are utilizing, that is a significant advancement. Seeing Relativity's development has been amazing. Their new technology has countless applications, and they have even been assisting NASA with the development of a new kind of aluminum rocket nozzle that is 3D printed. This company is producing some incredibly innovative work, and we are eager to see what they will do next. This is cosmic error as usual. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up, liking, and subscribing to our channel in order to see more videos similar to this one. Until the next time,